Um, <laughs> what, what would you say, uh, if someone wants to become an FEA specialist, what would you recommend them to do? What path should they take? Okay, so this is a pretty tricky thing to get into. I mean, I, I strongly believe that the fundamentals of FEA, the basics, are actually more challenging than, than the advanced stuff in some sense. And this is mostly because most people think they know the basics, while in fact they don't. And this will affect everything they do. Like, regardless if you are using like a very simplistic linear analysis or super hardcore, difficult, nonlinear, explicit, whatever, uh, then if you mess up the fundamentals, it will produce stupid outcomes regardless of how awesome and how complex software you use and how complex analysis you can set and successfully run. So sadly, starting in FEA is a frustrating thing. And I did like, it took me several years to, you know, get off the ground. And uh, the problem with me was that I started in my PhD and uh, simply my PhD thesis tutor told me like, look, this is a PhD, you need to do FEA. And I, like, believe me or not, while I, I really enjoy FEA now, like I was terrified and disgusted at the same time, because like the only thing I could think of was like, oh, matrix operations, like how am I going to do that? Like I'm very lazy with mathematics and I'm, I'm not good with differential equations and anything like it. So to me, this was like a death sentence. <laughs> so I did like something that any reasonable person would do. Like there was a task I was supposed to do that was a shell stability thing. And back then I had no idea that this is actually difficult. Like I thought like, you know, a task is any other. So I modeled the shell and spent like two years trying to run my first nonlinear analysis. The, um, not my brightest moments. So when you want to start yourself, I would say that what you want to do is actually start with something, something simple. And it would be best to start with something you can calculate with different means. By this, I mean, uh, maybe you studied engineering of some sort, like civil engineering or shipbuilding or like, I don't know, space stuff, whatever, mm -hmm. right? And sometime, somewhere during those studies, you most likely had strength of materials, like static designs, the, the basic fundamental mechanical subjects. And most likely some more advanced things connected to your industry, the field you, you, you study. So if you know how to design something by hand with pen and paper calculations, even in a very simplistic rudimental way, this is a huge advantage because you can then design something that you know is okay. And you know it because you know how to design it and then try to do the same thing with FEA. And I would start with very, very simple models because if you will start with something very complex, um, this would be very frustrating. So I was lucky enough that with my PhD, I was fighting with nonlinear stuff all the time and, and I basically got like 10,000 different error messages. But at the same time in my company, I could do some more simple stuff and uh, develop my skills this way. So, so finally I catch up with, with the fundamentals to, to, to do the more complex stuff. So I would definitely focus on something very simple and aim for something I know how to solve. And um, if someone would say, but I, I, know, I have no idea how to design stuff at all. Like there is nothing I know. In which case I would say it's better to actually learn how to design something before you start learning FEA because it will be a wasted effort. FEA is just a calculator and y you can be an awesome calculator operator with like, you know, 20,000 digits punched per minute or whatever. Like this doesn't help you solve any problem because you need to know how to, you, you need to be able to imagine the solution first. So uh, knowing how to design something, even if this is like a very simple beam, that's a good start. And, and I would start from there and, and if you can do it at your job or as a freelance engineer or even like volunteering work, um, if it's connected to a real life problem at some point, um, the problems will get more and more complicated by, by themselves. Right? You, you don't have to do anything. It will, it will just happen to you over time. Mm -hmm.